as we were compiling the list, we it came to our realization that there really isn't that many IMAX movies on 4K. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got some random scenes here and there, but Yeah. You would think that so many people complaining about uh, Marvel movies not having IMAX and uh, et cetera, et cetera, that there'd be like a ton of them that people are basing their television purchases around um, having the switching aspect, as, switching aspect ratios. But really, there's not that many to, uh, to, to buy. Um, so this is going to be our top 10 favorite in order from worst to, to best as a kind of a collective whole, at least from my list, as a collective whole. That's uh sounds good and looks good. And for me, coming in at number ten, which I think is like maybe one scene in the movie, First Man on 4K Blu-ray. <clears throat> I think it, there was a scene like chapter eighteen that is uh that's an IMAX, if I'm not mistaken. I also think there's something where he was in the uh maybe up in the little sky tower from the beginning. I could it's I could much the, the rocket launch, isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that yeah. Yeah. They, like that one scene, right? I think I was just imagining the first part. But but I think that's it. The, so that's that's my number 10. I remember visually, overall visually, uh, pretty grainy though. Like it was a grainy movie. I think it was shot on like film. Well, I mean, there it's, it takes place in the 60s, so I think they're trying to harken back to the yeah. original news footage kind of feel. It's got that vintage vintage feel to it. Unlike you guys, I was actually I actually remember seeing, <laughs> you know, the whole thing as a as a kid on a black and white TV. I'm not that young, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, that the the video quality in that pretty warm I from what I remember it's a warm looking movie. I think some of the highlights were kind of bright and clipped. Uh so mm-hmm. first man, number ten. Number nine. Some people might hate me for this one, but we're gonna go number nine. Dark Knight Rises. Number nine mm. IMAX experience. I mean, the first the first opening shot with the whole helicopter or airplane heist and then blowing it up and all that stuff. Yeah. Pretty amazing looking. I'm going to say it's pretty amazing looking at the first part there. Uh, the rest of the movie, though, I think he shot it on film, 35 mil. Kind of soft, a little blurry here and there, except for the IMAX stuff. Uh, I thought the rest was kind of subpar. The audio is good. I mean, the audio is good for, for 5.1. Everybody likes the Hans Zimmer stuff, so the the, the musical score rocks, of course. Probably the best part of the movie. And you did, you did, you did also say to me secretly, privately, that you felt that Dark Knight is overrated. The Dark Knight Rises is pretty overrated too, like movie. The, the weakest Batman <laughs> movie, I think. I would, I would, I would take like Batman Forever over The Dark Knight Rises, personally. Oh wow, <laughs> personally. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a stretch. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shane, you started drinking already. <laughs> yeah, no drinks today. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the IMAX scenes, of course, like all Nolan IMAX movies, pretty phenomenal looking. Yeah, I think. And then, of course, uh, the follow up, The Dark Knight Rises, my number eight is going to be The Dark Knight. I think for the majority of the movie, again, if it wasn't an IMAX, I think uh, kind of a s- average. For me, average subpar. I think it gave like a seven or something like that overall. Just for me personally. Just in terms of the photography? Yeah, just for the 9 IMAX stuff. Because okay. I think he, he did shoot in like 35 millimeter as well. Um, that's, uh, again, the musical score was good. Very memorable score from Hans Zimmer. And the IMAX stuff at the beginning, the bank heist with the Joker. Great. The part where he's like gliding down with the with the wing. What is a the bat wing cape or whatever you want to call it? Yeah. It's a glider crashes into the building great rest of the stuff eh okay I could be I could do without um but that's my number eight the dark knight coming in at number seven is Star Trek into darkness mm. Mm. uh what was that what was that good scene at the beginning there brass that you were talking about earlier yeah, yeah, you know, when they're just going through, at the, at the very beginning, they're on this planet, they're just going through the very opening scene where you've got, got Bones and Kirk going through the forest, right? Oh, and yeah, all, yeah. The, all these red leaves over everything. Amazing scene. Amazing. Mm. Yeah, really. Yeah, nice. That was really, really grabbing. Awesome looking in 3D as well, if I do remember yeah, correctly. Amazing. Yeah, great looking movie yeah. in 3D. And the Atmos. And also, yeah, yeah. And also when you've got those, uh, you know, when you've got, when you've got the, the other 
Robocop captain pulls out of nowhere in that big, big, big warship. Full screen looked absolutely phenomenal. Like some of the scenes and and that. I mean, that's what that's my favorite Star Trek movie out of the new trilogy. You know, I really did enjoy it, and I think the scenes just look the IMAX scenes just look second to none. And the Atmos mix too, rocking Atmos <laughs> mix. If you guys have listened to it or seen it, awesome Atmos yeah. mix. Uh, so far, the best one that I've mentioned so far on the list for Atmos, at least. I, I think the uh, what was what was first man? Was that Atmos too, Adam? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I think that might have been a forgettable one. Yeah, it was actually pretty punchy as far as an audio yeah. audio mix goes, but I can't quite remember what was Atmos though. Hmm. Tell you what, that that rocket launch scene that that was quite punchy. I mean that that rattled the house. I vaguely remember it. I do vaguely. <laughs> Uh, you know, first man only made the list because we couldn't figure out like the tenth movie to find, to, to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason why. And that, what is it like one scene on there too? Um, but uh, Star Trek Into Darkness was the number seven for my list at least. Still a great look. I if I was gonna watch it, I would watch it in uh, 3D though. Like I prefer the 3D over the 4K. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, number six. Coming in at number six, one of my favorite movies that I watched multiple times, Interstellar. Love it. Great movie. I, except for the ending. I despise the ending, but I love 80% of it. I just I don't like the last part of it. The whole maze thing I didn't, wasn't a fan of. Um, awesome soundtrack. Great sound. 5.1 mix. Very, very good soundtrack. I could listen to the soundtrack. Not many movie soundtracks I would listen to, but this one I would. It catches the good feels, the father-daughter feels, um, the IMAX stuff, awesome looking, just as any other Christopher Nolan IMAX stuff. The rest of the movie is pretty good too. Yeah, the, you know, the, photography, the and cinematography. Really yeah, uh, of course the story is awesome. I like, I do like the story, most of the story, yeah, except the last part of the yeah, story. Except the last part, <laughs> but like visually all the way through, it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Probably one of his best looking movies, just uh, you know, from beginning to end. And awesome soundtrack great atmos stuff that's number six was interstellar and then we're gonna go to number five another one he's uh monopolizing the list yeah he tends to do that (laughs) dunkirk rolling in at number five my least favorite christopher nolan movie mine too i still have a hard time getting through this one it's a tough watch for me it really is a tough watch for me but uh, no denying, fantastic looking picture. I think I gave like an 8 or something, maybe like an 8.9 or whatever for video quality back then. Um, audio mix, really good 5.1 mix too. All the aerial battles, the ticking clock, the the score with the ticking clock, tick, tick, tick. I like how it builds up the tension, the big uh, build up crescendos and everything like that. Awesome sounding. Awesome mix, awesome visuals, nice pleasing visuals. Clean, very clean. Very clean. Super clean looking. And we're gonna we're just gonna keep going with uh, Christopher Nolan here. Let's go to number four, <laughs> Tenet. Tenet. I gave this bad boy. I forgot what I gave. Like an eight point nine, maybe a nine. I think it was an eight point nine. I think I, I think I ranked it the same visually as uh, Dunkirk, but I think there's just better looking all the way through. I think this is his best looking movie. I think. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think <clears> so. Um. Story wise, I didn't like it story wise at the at first, but after the fifth time I watched it, it started growing on me. And then probably... you finally started understanding it after the, the, the fifth, <laughs> yeah. fifth time. Yeah. yeah, it's like watching mm-hmm. Memento. It's, you have to see it more than mm-hmm. once to really start mm-hmm. getting your hooks in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't go in the first time watching expecting an action movie. And there's action in it, but just don't go think it's an action movie because you're going to get lost and pissed off. <laughs> I remember that first, the first reverse bullet scene. I thought there was something wrong with, like, something wrong with my TV or that I, something was messed up. Very uh, Christopher Nolan cerebral esque movie, oh, yeah, to say the least. But the visuals are outstanding. One of my favorite looking movies from 2020. Awesome soundtrack. Uh, the vocals could use a little work, but hey, I guess, I guess if you're running out of burning, exploding buildings, you probably can't hear your 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 partner talking next to you. I guess, yeah, might be a little tough hearing their vo- their voices. Everything has its perks. Good and awesome in one area, and then falls in another. That's that's okay. That's okay. Still, still great movie. Yep. That is number four, Tenet. And I think that's it for Christopher Nolan. You're now off the list, Chris Nolan. 
Coming in at number three, Mission Impossible Fallout. Bum, 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 oh, bum, yeah. Bum, bum. Mm-hmm. Awesome. The whole helicopter thing at the end? Oh, that was crazy. Sweet. I mean, how good is that? I mean, plus the Atmos mix, too. That visual, uh, the IMAX stuff, or the helicopter stuff at the end, and Tom Cruise doing all these stunts, plus the Atmos mix, the whole thing with uh, Paris, France. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah, man. Rocking scene. Come on. Great colors. Warm color palette. Tom Cruise looking a little bit older in this movie. He's not so so youngish anymore. Um, yeah, he's still freaking... Still a beast yeah. for being like 55 or whatever, right? What is he, almost 60? 55, 60? He's like 56. Is it all? Yeah, he's getting there. Um, one of the best, one of the, the best Mission Impossible movies. Like, how do they keep getting better every year? How how is that even possible? It's, a, <laughs> it's like the Fast and Furious franchise all over again. <laughs> but that's uh, that's number three. Number two, Aquaman. Oh yeah. Oh. That's some crazy visuals. Great. Listen, if you guys want to get awesome HDR, Aquaman is it. If you're all about the color and the pop and the brightness and the crispiness, uh, Aquaman, that's where it's at. If you want a 10 soundtrack or very close, maybe like a 9.9, Aquaman is it. If you want a lot of bass, you want tenant levels of bass and good voices, Aquaman. You can't beat it. That's number two on the list. Superhero movie. And of course, number one, one of the best sounding movies ever, Transformers The Last Night. I tried to to do sound effects. (laughs) (laughs) Number one, again, with the the HDR and the crispiness and the awesome visuals. Crispy, crispy. crispy. The the 3D, if I'm not mistaken, the 3D is in Atmos as well, right? We we did a list, I think, think when that year it came out. Was it last year or the year? I think it was the year before. Mm Mm-hmm. And it got number one in both 3D and 4K, didn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, awesome. It was movie. that good. Yeah. It was. Say so what you will about the movie. That's a fun movie. It's mindless. It's they're long. They're like almost three hours. Eye candy. Yeah, ridiculously long. Uh, but man, if I was again another movie that just like Star Trek, if I was gonna really rewatch it, I'd watch the 3D version over the 4K version. I think maybe Adam would agree as well. But this is it, man. I don't know. Really? No? You think so? You think it's better in 4K? The IMAX scenes? Isn't it IMAX in uh, 3D too? Oh, yeah, you want to know. Is it? I'm trying to remember now. uh, It must be. I think that did have some IMAX scenes on it. Yeah. It must be. It must be. Oh, shit. Okay. No brainer then. No brainer. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the... uh, That's it. That's the number one right there. Is Is it a bad movie? Yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's a fun movie. It's a fun right. movie. I mean, you don't, you don't go into it thinking you're going to be watching some Oscar-winning thing. It's you know, but as an overall home theater experience, this is this is my list for the home theater experience for IMAX. Number one being, of course, Transformers: The Last Night. But that is my list for the top IMAX movies on 4K Blu-ray. What is on your list? Leave a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on your top ten list. <laughs> 